Hey guys, uh, too many toys and not enough time here and today I wanted to show you a little project I've been working on. This is a something you'll see in a lot of cars. This is a automatically dimming home link enabled mirror and a lot of them are produced out by Gentax which you know if you've been in a car equipped with one of these mirrors you've probably seen this sort of model on the windshield and they're very popular on the used market because really to make it work all you need is ground and power wires and everything else is contained in the mirror and I'm no exception I want to have this in my car as well currently my car does not have any sort of home link or auto dimming capability on, the, on its mirror um, when I got this I was curious to see whether or not I could make the buttons on this mirror light up and I th initially thought it was possible because the buttons are actually translucent now uh, this is the Gentax 313 model which I don't know if you c how well you can see that there's a GNTX 313 and the model is NZL STD HL3 that HL3 means it's Homelink 3.0 so this would probably not work with some of the newer garage door openers on the market but it should work with the one I'm using in my garage and it takes a little effort to get a mirror apart like this um, it's snapped together and the front bezel will come off if you're gentle and when it does you'll find that there's really not a whole lot to the mirror itself so there's the bezel notice the Gentex 313 model has the translucent buttons which means light can pass through and they're painted on the other side with only a portion of the white background left as an indicator of what the button does the 453 version of this mirror which is the later generation has completely black buttons so you don't have the option of backlighting those mirrors at all and I have never actually seen anybody mention whether or not even the 313 could be backlighted so I was curious and as one Australian uh, blogger typically says don't turn it on take it apart so that's what I did um, I got a tool like this you see these uh, it looks a lot like a guitar pick this is actually from a iPhone disassembly kit so I use this to pry open the the, um, the bezel without damaging it if you just rush in with a screwdriver you're gonna gouge this up plastic is where it's at so use a plastic tool if you're gonna do this and be aware that what you have to do in order to open these mirrors is wedge the your plastic tool in and then push upward on the back half of the bezel which would then release the clips that hold onto these little holes in the front bezel and if you're careful you won't break any of them mine are all intact just gotta go slow find one that's the most compliant and start there and then go around alright so now we know how to take this off I'm gonna set this aside for now because well we we know that light can pass through this so there's one point in favor of backlighting then everything else should basically just slide out of your mirror in the back half it's just a plastic chassis there's nothing back here except some pins to mount the um, main board to the unit and then normally what you'd have is the mirror would be plugged into a connector on the back of the circuit board now in my case it's disconnected because I already pulled this off so carefully pry out the connector and fish the wires out of the board so you can separate the mirror piece from the board so this is the board there's a lot of surface mount, mount components on it um, this is your home link section um, so technically you could probably take this off and make it function on its own um, so I didn't really mess with this this is antennas and whatever home link requires to function 
What I found interesting was that there appeared to be little spots next to each of the buttons on the board that looked like they could house LEDs. Specifically these pads right here there aren't weren't occupied by anything and it looked like they were just perfectly placed to light the buttons up, but of course nothing was installed there. And the same is true on the other side for the on-off button for the mirror. What I also found was that there was a missing resistor R11 on my board. Keep in mind the version of my board is 2800156 revision A part A. So in my case, resistor 11 was missing. As and as I found later, it's the one that actually would supply or connect the LEDs to ground um, in the circuit. So with that missing, you don't have any current flow through the circuit, even if you put LEDs in. What I also found after I finally traced the circuit out was that there was a uh, PN2222 two a transistor installed on the board but it wasn't actually hooked up to anything it was one side of it was connected to the negative side of the neg of the diode traces the LED traces but the other two legs were basically connected to traces that led nowhere one of which was the R11 and another one of which was leading me to a chip on the board which I'm gonna guess is proprietary, although it says Motorola on it as a Motorola symbol uh, SC541081CDW I couldn't find any info on it unfortunately uh, maybe some of you may be more successful at that but what I did find was that there was a 5 volt output on the pin that the um, central leg of the transistor would have connected to, which led me to believe that that's a 5 volt logic output from the chip, and the reason there's a couple of pads along the way from the output of the chip to the transistor is because the transistor probably requires more amperage or more current than the chip can provide, so you would have and the uh, rather what I should say is that it requires a lower voltage in order to turn on than the chip provides therefore there would have to be some sort of resistor in the circuit to drop the voltage so with all this information in mind I drew out the circuit and I more or less figured out what I need to get in order to make this function and I've tested this with just some large LEDs but the LEDs on the board are tiny. The LEDs are placed two in series and there are five pairs of two in series. So essentially there's ten LEDs total to light the buttons up and they're all you know arranged two in series and f five banks of two in parallel. So that concludes the introductory portion of this. I'm gonna set up for soldering and then I'm gonna probably just speed up the video a little bit or omit soldering altogether because it won't be that exciting. And then hopefully I'll be able to show you the finished product once I put the, um, the LEDs in. Hey everyone, we're back and uh, as you can see I have LEDs that are lighting up on the board now. now my original plan of making these work wasn't quite correct, largely because I wasn't terribly great at transistors or knowing how they work. So, I um, went back and revised my approach to how to make these function, and they're now lit up. So, so far, starting from a bare board like we got it out of the mirror, what I've done is I've soldered in my SMD LEDs which is quite a task given how big my iron is. I actually went ahead and changed the color of the constantly on LED underneath this diffuser because I didn't like the green very much so I put an orange one in there. Works great. 
I put in jumpers across all the missing connections that are on this board and I suspect the way the manufacturer originally wanted this to work would have been to put actual resistors in these areas as I mentioned before the diodes are basically in five banks of two the five banks are in parallel while each resist uh, I'm sorry each diode in the each bank is in series and each bank has an individual connection to the 12 volt rail uh, that supplies power to the LEDs these jumpers that would normally hook it up to the 12 volts I think would normally be an LED uh, and a resistor of some sort a um, in my case I think they'd have to be like a 350 ohm resistor for it to function correctly so but in my case I put in these jumpers and uh, I ended up dropping voltage down upstream of the rail because there was a couple of jumpers going across the board that are replaced with resistors and that works okay that achieves the same purpose but instead of using surface mount components I'm using regular good old-fashioned half watt ax uh, I think they're called axial um, resistors so that works out just fine and the ground side of the LEDs is switched through a NPN transistor um, PN2222A um, also marked as Q one on the board it's switched to ground so the diodes end up coming back together to the collector pin on the uh, transistor the emitter pin is hooked up to ground through yet another resistor to drop voltage further and to actually limit the current flowing through the circuit and the base pin of the uh, transistor is hooked up to a logic output on the chip the logic output is 5 volts and it is present every, every time you, pl you apply power to the mirror so basically LEDs turn on whenever you have power the nice thing about using a transistor for this is that it will to a degree regulate the amount of current flowing through the circuit so you as, as we all know cars don't have a constant 12 volt source of electricity it varies depending on the car, the battery state of charge, etc. so having a active component in the circuit that will control amperage is helpful now the resistors I ended up adding are these two large ones they are larger than everything else on the board I think the rest of it is just quarter watt resistors these are half watt in order to dissipate power um, the manufacturer would originally use the SMD components and because there would be more of them the power would be um, distributed better across the board the Q1 was already present here um, from the manufacturer I'm not sure why they chose to do that but it's there and I ended up just hooking it up essentially and it all works so um, your board may be different so don't take my word as a clear sign that this is how it's supposed to work because yours could be completely different as I found out uh, Gentex 313 with the compass module has a completely different board and it does not carry over the same um, con same approach of LED installation as the, uh, the as this board does so you're gonna have to trace the circuit you're gonna have to actually understand how it works it's not gonna be just drop in you know a couple of LEDs and resistors and and go it's gonna take work but to me it's worth it, it was, it's been a fun project now I need to reassemble the mirror and see you know how it looks once it's all assembled and then give it a shot in my car and try to make it work something else that I wanted to point out as well is that on these mirrors the connectors are proprietary you're not going to find it in a Molex catalog or somewhere else who sell you know, in these typical sources of connectors it seems like Gentex went to the trouble of making their own but as it turns out one of these 
10 pin connectors, in this case it's 9 pin, I'll need to fix that, it's fairly simple to fix, but these connectors have the correct pin spacing to work with the mirror. So I, I should be able to plug it in and work. And these are commonly used on various computer motherboard accessories that plug in, like uh, USB expansion slots and or uh, cards like this. And these are like three bucks. The basic pigtail cable that I've seen for Gentex is like fifteen dollars. So hey, five times cheaper. Yet yeah, won't necessarily have the same locking features as the original connector does. But honestly, the way these guys are set up you never really have much strain on the cable to make it pull out it should work just fine without requiring you know a manual lock the other disadvantage of this is it's not keyed so you're gonna have to pay attention when you insert it to make sure that you're inserting into the correct in the correct orientation but to me I'm wiring it up I know how it's supposed to go so I don't think I'd have this issue you, you, can, you can always try to put like a little blob of glue or something on there so that it only goes in one way and not the other. You know, that's always an option. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna reassemble the mirror, uh, get the connector fixed and fitting, and then I guess we'll give it a shot and see how it works. Okay, so the mirror is now reassembled. Uh, I powered it on just to see what it looks like with the new lights installed, new LEDs, and I think it has very nice lighting to it. It's not overly bright but it'll be noticeable uh, when you, you know, when it's dark in the car uh, reassembly was super easy um, just go slow put everything back where you found it and you know start with one clip and then the rest of them just kinda slide right in um, again you wanna check mirror function just you know to make sure that everything works correctly so if I shine a beam of light at the sensor the mirror will become dark. Yep, just the way it's supposed to. Um, as far as checking functionality on the home link, that would require you to add constant power, which I'll shut the power supply off to do this just in case I miss. So I put that in. Imagine I'm only testing us on the bench, so I gotta be careful where I hook up. I'll turn it on, it powers up press the button, I got a red indicator meaning that it's transmitting okay turn off, the mirror is turned off meaning that now when I shine into the light nothing happens turn the mirror back on orange in indicator and the mirror gets dim so everything works, now it's just a matter of getting a um, connector made up and putting it in the car. Hey guys, uh, this is a bit of a follow-up video to the one I posted about uh, the Gentex 313 mirror being modified with backlighting. And I finally got it installed in my car. Um, as I said in the other video, I ended up using the connector that I got off of the USB uh, bracket that I bought for like three bucks and that worked perfectly it even fits tightly in the connector so there isn't really much of a risk of it popping out just because you're driving around with uh, in the car and there's vibration so it's very secure only needs three wires so I figured out where I need to tap that into my car and made it work so now I actually discovered an interesting feature I was under the impression that I would have backlighting all the time as it turns out the chip inside the mirror only outputs a, a signal to turn the LEDs on when the photo sensors detect that it's dark. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn the accessory power on, or the put the key in the on position. Um, this shows that the mirror is in fact turned on. So you can see that. Now, Illumination is not tur currently turned on, which makes, you know, might make you think that I screwed up somewhere and it's just a failure altogether. But, if I cover the front sensor for a long enough period of time, the mirror will switch on the illumination. 
and we'll see that in hopefully a few seconds. So it's actually a kind of cool feature. So there's the illumination and we are now you know all the buttons are lit up so perfect um, and then when you turn take your finger off eventually uh, the sensor will turn off or the sensors will see that it's light enough to turn off illumination now I tested the mirror it functions fine it dims correctly my home link works you know you can see the little the orange light I put in is a little overpowering on the home link so it's hard to see when you're actually pressing it but my garage door opener responded correctly to it so I think home link works so anyway um, like I said just to follow up to the video I found it to be really nifty that they actually went to the trouble of doing that and making the um, backlighting be photosensitive which means that you don't have to wire in illumination um, signal into the mirror in order to get it to turn on at night and not during the day this will do it automatically anyway I uh, hope you like this if you got questions about doing this if you are trying and you're stuck etc uh, shoot me a line comment like whatever you want to do uh, I'll try to help as much as I can uh, as much as I can you know with, with the knowledge I've gained so far for, about these mirrors Anyway, uh, hope you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next video.